Well, I've been preaching for 50 years now, and I want to tell you very briefly three incidents that greatly impressed me over those years. But first, let me read to you the well-known words of James, James chapter 1, and verse 23, he says, If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. So there seems to be an urgency in not only hearing the word of God, but in responding to it ASAP. Because the tendency is that the word of God, as the Lord Jesus said, the seed doesn't just lie there on the surface, the birds come and steal it away. And he tells us that the seeds are stolen by the devil himself. So there needs to be a certain urgency in not only having the seed of God applied to my heart, to my life, but to receive it deeply into my heart so that it actually makes a change. These three little incidents. The first of all, I was up in Quebec in um, a region that is mostly English speaking on the south shore of the St. Lawrence River, uh, what are called the Eastern Townships. And uh, I was actually speaking to a young man there on the phone uh, when I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And uh, as we talked and I sensed his desire for the word, I said, look, why don't why don't I come up there and have a few meetings? And he said, you wouldn't come up here. I said, well, if you asked me, I might. And uh, so arrangements were made and uh, they picked me up down in, I think, Vermont at the airport and drove me up to this little conference. And we had a wonderful time in the Word. But what surprised me was that the morning after, as I was leaving to go to the airport, almost the whole little assembly showed up at the home where I was staying. And their intention was to have a thanksgiving time for the ministry that God had given us over the weekend. And in fact, almost the whole assembly crammed into a big van and drove me to the airport. I'd never had that sort of experience before. But what a wonderful time, not only to pray beforehand the conference, asking the Lord to send some ministry to us, to speak to us, but then after the conference to thank him for doing that. And just the gratitude of their heart and their appreciation really touched me deeply. And I got to tell you, in 50 years, the only time it's ever happened. Well, the second occasion was in Cincinnati. And there I had a conference. And at the end of the conference, the elders got up and they confessed that the Spirit of God had convicted them of failures on their part and the part of the assembly in not doing the things that they had heard at the conference. And so they were having a special meeting with the assembly to discuss the way forward so that they could bring their lives into alignment to the Word of God as it had been taught to them. And that was deeply moving to me. And it fulfills this principle that James gives us, that when we receive the Word, we should immediately look for ways to apply the truth in our lives, because if we don't, it, it fritters away. Nothing changes. And I'm afraid I've sat in many a meeting and listened to excellent ministry, and then got up, got in my car and driven home as if I hadn't even been there. And so how important it is for us when we hear the word of God to say, Lord, speak to me, not only reveal something so I'm smarter, so I know more, so I can impress people with my knowledge of the Bible, but so I can be changed to be more like the Lord Jesus, so I can be more godly, so I can be a living epistle, living out the truth that you have revealed to me in your word. Now, the third incident occurred I was out in Grand Junction, Colorado. I only had a couple of days there. And um, then I, I was down in San Luis Valley. And again, only a couple of days. And the brothers in the San Luis Valley, they said, we'd like to have some gospel meetings. Well, it's not usual for me to take only a couple of nights of gospel. It wasn't in those days, at least a week or two. Sometimes you needed that long to stir up the saints before you actually began to see a movement among those who were lost. 
In any case, I preached the first night. And after the meeting, some of the elders came to me and said, now, brother, you had a real hard time tonight, didn't you? Things didn't go very well, did they? Well, maybe you don't like other people to know it, but that was the fact that I was running in mud and I wasn't making any progress at all. So they said, we'll be over at the house where you're staying tomorrow morning. I think six o'clock they had to be there before they went to work at seven. And so the brethren gathered in the living room. We got down on our knees. We cried out to God to do a work. And you know, the next night we were renting a room in the college. When we got there, the custodian had not unlocked the door. Instead of being frustrated, the Christian said, well, we've got a little extra time. Let's go out and invite some more people in. And I remember there was a man who was walking down the street and he was invited to come along and he came into the meeting and he heard the gospel and he got saved. But you see, these people were serious about the gospel. They weren't just treating it like going through the motions. As my dad used to say, we can go through the motions, but the Holy Spirit won't. And so we need to engage with God, engage against the enemy and see God work. And so these three incidents stood out in my life out of all these years of preaching all over the world. And there are other wonderful things that have happened that have been greatly encouraging to me. But as I thought this evening about this message, about being serious, not only about hearing the word, preaching the word, studying the word, but living the word and taking the truth and applying it, being thankful for the revelation he gives us. And then being serious, being engaged in the gospel, and also being eager to obey what he shows us in his word. So may the Lord help us. If you're having a conference soon, or a little gathering of believers even, or you're studying the word on the Lord's day, there should be this anticipation that God is going to work. He's going to work in us. He's going to work through us. And we want to be serious about this. So God help you in the coming year, not to be a hearer only, but all of us, may we be doers of the word.